Today, for this video, what we're going to do is we're going to graph an absolute value that contains a vertical stretch or a compression. We know that we have a vertical stretch if we have a term on the outside of the absolute value or the outside of a quadratic or the outside of a radical, the outside of whatever function you're dealing with. And our term happens to be greater than one. So if A happens to be like two or three or 1.5, the graph is going to be stretched vertically by a factor of a. So what that means is our, out, uh, our output or our y coordinate is going to be multiplied by three from what it was originally. So it's gonna be three times as much or two times as much, whatever your factor of a is. A compression occurs if a, the value that you're multiplying by, is between zero and one. So like it's one half or two thirds, three fifths, etc. Anything that's between zero and one, the reason we have to put the zero in there is if we're multiplying by zero and it cannot include that is a zero would make it a constant function and one is not included because if I multiply one times that value then it's just the same thing so it doesn't change it at all. A negative makes it do a reflection so if you had a negative number which is why it's not included in here then it would reflect over the x or the y axis depending upon where the negative value is. So let's take a look at what happens. Um, so for the first one that we have here, this one is going to be a vertical stretch since three is greater than one. And this is going to be by a factor of three. So what we're going to do is our output essentially is going to be multiplied um, by three. And so if we think about it, remember our parent function for this is just the absolute value of x. And so it goes through zero, zero, one, one, two, two, three, three, et cetera, forever and ever. So this is what our parent function is going to do. And then the other side, when I take the absolute value of negative one, remember the distance is one, so our parent function would be here. So if you know what your parent function looks like, you can graph any absolute value by just shifting it however, or shifting it, or stretching it, compressing it, depending upon what's on the outside of the absolute value, or on the inside. So for this, what we're going to do is remember that now we're multiplying our x by three. So instead of being at one, when I plug in one, the zero is still gonna stay the same place because if I'm not adding or subtracting anything to it, um, to or from it, so since it's, it's just going to stay at zero, the absolute value of zero is zero, and then my output would be zero. But the next one is going to change. When I plug in x is one, I get the absolute value of one, which is one, and then my output would be three. So this would be my next point. And then we would do the same thing for two, the absolute value of two, it would go up three times two, which is going to put us at six. So we would be here. So this is what our right-hand side is going to do, except for it should be a straight line. It's very hard to draw a straight line on here. Um, and then we're gonna do the same thing to the negative side. When I plug this in, the absolute value, remember negative one is one place away from zero, so it's still just one. And then I would multiply one times three so three would be my answer, and then six because it's always symmetric. So notice what happens with our V is that this part was stretched up. It's like pulling taffy, it's pulled both of these inward. So anytime the value is greater than one, you're going to have a stretch which elongates the graph. For the second one, I'm not gonna draw the parent function on there because we already know what it looks like. So for this one, we're going to have a vertical compression. And so that means it's not gonna go up as quickly because now it's only gonna go up half as much each time. So it's gonna be a vertical compression by a factor of one half. So what we're going to do is this time when we pick our values for x, we're gonna plug it in. So we would still have zero and zero times one half, that does not change. But now when I go to one, one times one half gives me half. And then when I go to two, the absolute value of two is two times one half gives me one. So what's happening, and now if I went clear over to four, it would just be up at two. So Notice what's happening on this one is it looks like our graph has been squished, like somebody has compressed it. And so our graph doesn't open nearly as quickly. 
So when you have a stretch, it goes up much faster from the parent function. When you have a compression, um, it's like a compressor pushed it down. So there's like a downward movement on our original graph. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please make sure to reach out to me. If there are any other topics that you need me to do, please let me know that as well. Um, make sure to check out all of the other content that I have because I have quite a bit on there and I continue to add regularly. As always, thanks for watching.